So about the fall is a theory that I heard of when I start, start working on marketing. And I created different landing pages, and on the landing pages, people were saying, like, all the important information should be above the fold, which means the user doesn't scroll, and all the extras should be below. So that meant for marketing that if we want the user to convert, that means to fill a form or something like that, then we must put the form above everything and all the information below. And honestly, for me, that didn't make any sense because if the user doesn't read what we are selling, we cannot ask him or her to fill out the form. So I don't agree with the theory, and I don't know if you are with me who doesn't agree with the theory. Yeah, some people, some people. Okay, not many, but I'm going to prove it wrong. <laughs> so. And let's check it out in Wikipedia. Wikipedia, we have a scroll through Wikipedia or of our lives. I mean, high school is full of it. Uh, we scroll. We know that we scroll. And then let's check out this website, which we all know about, this is Chase.com website. And according to the above the fall theory, this website should be a massive fail because the form is below the fold. But on the other hand, it has sold out. So what's, what's the key point in this? Why did it work? Well, they engaged the user, basically, information and other stuff like the terminal, <laughs> the countdown, the other countdown in the workshops, a game. I mean, why did they put a game in there? I don't know, they just say, I'm gonna put a game in there. And it was incredible. It didn't make any sense. They didn't have to put a game in there, but they engaged the user. And you can spend like 30 minutes in this website without getting bored. I'm really bad at it, but some people may be better. And the neon cut is like hidden in the planetarium. And then the suspicious octopus, another thing at the bottom of the page that Again, it gives the sensation of, I want to keep scrolling because I want to discover more stuff. So yeah, the octopus has nothing to do with JS maybe, but it's something else that you can add to the website. So for me, really, the about the fall theory is nothing but an excuse for lazy web design. It's like, I don't have much time to do this, so I'm just gonna put the form over there and hope to the users to fill out it, the form. But no, if you really put and uh, love into it, you can make this awesome website that the JSConf has made. And then drive us to Parallax. Um, what has Parallax to do with the above default? Well, Parallax means scrolling. So if the user doesn't scroll, he will never enjoy Parallax. But Parallax is a way of engaging the user while he or she scrolls. So according to Wikipedia, Parallax is like moving the viewport, which would be us, but we are not really moving. We are giving the sensation of the user moving. So this trend in web design began with Nike's website in 2011, and it means moving different elements in different layers along a scroll base. That means the user scrolls and elements move. And this it has this sensation of perspective and depth, that you cannot give in any other way. So how do you do parallax in web design? This was one of the challenges when I started with this talk. There are so many ways of applying parallax, and I found four which were like the best. One is using jQuery, the other one is using a library, CSS, or something called pillar, which is not really parallax. Well, um, option one is jQuery. And let's imagine we have this um, wrapper thing with an image, Powerpuff Girls, and some info about that. Um, we add some CSS to it. What's important about the CSS is that you must generate overflow, because without overflow, parallax really doesn't work. 
And then info, which is this red thing above, uh, must be relative. If it's not relative, then you will have this problem that when you apply parallax, the image will cover the text and you won't be able to read it. So the, Im the info must be relative or absolute. It must have some C index applied to it. So um, again, we must have this info element, which is all the information relative. And why is that? When we apply parallax in this, in this um, form, we will apply it through transform property. It's a CSS transform property. And we are not really telling the, the image to be relative or absolute or fixed. So why does it cover the text? Well, because the transform property um, creates, it behaves like position relative. It, it means that creates a new stocking context. So that means its original space is still occupied, but um, with it, this new stocking context, and it activates the C index. So even though the image is still static, when we apply transform property to it, it suddenly beca beca um, becomes relative. It's a strange, but it does. So info must be uh, relative at least, or have a C index. So when we have the CSS, then we apply some jQuery. Any version of jQuery will do. And then we write some jQuery. It's not that easier. <laughs> so this is one way of doing parallax through jQuery, which is calling the scroll function on wrapper. And inside that, you call for a scroll top. A scroll top is a function that returns how many pixels has the user scroll, like 30, 50, that. So we create something like this. Um, that means we ask for a scroll top and we save that into distance. And then we tell the image inside wrapper, which is the power path girls, to translate Y half of the distance that the rest of the content. And that, as a result, gives this. So as you can see, the image scrolls at a different pace than the rest of the content. So yeah, that's really uh, awesome. And then we can apply a negative value, just a dash, and we can make the image go up as if this isn't working, but and the image goes up, imagine. <laughs> Something will fail. So yes, it's awesome, but there's a little problem, is that a scroll function doesn't have really well performance. I mean, if we are, Applying it only to one image inside a website is okay, but if we want to do everything with a scroll function, then we have a performance problem. So the right thing will be use request animation frame, but you have to write like a lot of JavaScript, and we have, we are not JSConf, we have a lot of JavaScript already. So I go for option two. Option two are libraries. Well, there are many, a scroll magic, parallax.js, a scroller, and many more. I go for a scroller. What's interesting about it? Uh, you don't require jQuery. You don't need to be an expert in JavaScript. That's awesome for me. <laughs> and it's magic relies in something called data attributes. Data attributes are attributes that you apply to the element you want to transform. And you simply, in provide an anchor inside the website. Uh, when the element reaches that, uh, that anchor, the animation triggers. It's something like this. Let's imagine we have a wrapper with information, something called move. Move, it, move is this warning circle, and then more information. We call a scroller, we initiate it, and then we have something like this if we apply this thing. So what is going on here? Well, we indicate these two uh, data attributes. One is data top and the other one data bottom. On data top, we tell the element to be red and rotate 360 degrees, which means one round. And on data bottom, we tell it to be blue and not to be rotated. So data top applies and triggers when the element reaches the top of the page. That's why we see it red. And the data bottom attributes applies 
when we reach the bottom of the page. So that's basically where we apply these data attributes on the, the anchors and the animation triggers when that element reaches that point. Something like this, you apply to an element, when the element reaches that point, it turns to what we save. And there are a lot of data attributes. Um, this is actually from the GitHub page of a scroller. You have all this, um, to like a cheat sheet. Um, you can apply any kind of CSS to it because it actually depends on CSS. So any kind of uh, CSS you can apply there, it will work. Then, um, what if we want faster parallax? Well, um, we can just avoid JavaScript because we hate JavaScript or because just you, you don't want to write JavaScript and you will be able to create a faster parallax. And that's option three, which is using CSS and only CSS. And what's great about doing parallax with CSS, you don't need jQuery, you don't need JavaScript, really you don't need anything of that, it's pure CSS. Um, here are, here's some, one of the examples. Um, there. And so we can see this has this parallax effect, effect on it and it's only CSS, it's pure CSS. You don't write JavaScript, jQuery, or you don't need anything else but CSS. And what you need to do this is actually use perspective property in CSS. That means that sadly, Internet Explorer 10 doesn't read it. But in the future, it will. And this is another example with CSS and Parallax. This example is from Scott Kellum. Uh, he created a SAS mixing in order for every one of us to, to have it easier when we do Parallax with CSS. So you can check this one out as well. And then another great example is this one that comes with an article explaining uh, step by step how to do this. And it works like this. You have those different layers and as you scroll, all those layers are going one below the other and it gives again the sensation of perspective you, because you are actually using perspective in CSS. Then there's, there's option four in case you don't get along with CSS or you don't get along with parallax in JavaScript or you, you just don't want to write one line of code, which is something called pillar. Well, pillar is not really parallax, it's something called pillar. So sometimes it is confused like parallax, but it's not parallax. And it comes with WoW.js, it's a, a small thing, only three kilobytes. And it has many options for the animations, like the duration, the, the delay, the iteration, and many other cool stuff. And the only problem is that once you play it, you cannot replay it. That's the difference with parallax. When I do parallax, when I scroll to the top again, the animations go again, not here. The animation only triggers when the page loads, um, when the user scrolls for the first time, but then everything remains like that. And it's actually what the JSConf website uses. So it goes with animation CSS, which is something like this. And you pick uh, animation like bouncing up. This isn't working, but you can check it out at your home. Well, you can check it out later. It works. <laughs> and then you add this thing which is uh, WebJS with some wrong loading images, but WebJS, something like this, um, full of Comic Sans and all that. And yes, it doesn't require jQuery nor JavaScript nor any kind of code. Uh, you can create this, MA, uh, this pillar effect, which is basically this. It's what the shades can we use when all the things appear out of nowhere. And as you can see, as I scroll, the animations trigger. 
But the only problem is, as I scroll back again, the animations don't trigger again. That's a difference with parallax. And it doesn't give the sensation of perspective because there is no perspective in this. But you don't write a line of code in JavaScript nor CSS for additional. So oh, what are final recommendations for um, parallax? Well, first of all, um, responsive first, then animations, then parallax, then everything. When you apply parallax to a website, you destroy the, the organization and the flow of the content because you begin creating relative, absolute, and fixed elements, and everything goes crazy. So if you apply parallax before making your website for mobile or responsive, then at the time you want to make, you want to make it responsive, you go crazy because it, Oh, the whole of your website is kind of weird. So make responsive first and then add the animation and the parallax. But um, parallax, and especially a scroller, doesn't work really well, neither on mobile devices and on touch devices. What can you do about it? You can turn it off with Enquire.js, or and you can use Modernizer to turn it off on touch screens. Yes, because touch screens and parallax, uh, and especially a scroller, like don't get along really well. Um, what else? It's better to animate, transform property, and opacity. Transform meaning a scale, a skew, rotate, and translate, because those are cheaper and they work better. They have better performance and opacity as well. And if you want to animate colors, you cannot use hexadecimal um, because you cannot go through an, an F to a zero, there's no transition between them. You have to use RGBA or HSL, um, simply because you can go through 255 to zero, but no from F to zero, it doesn't work. That is simple, changing the, mode, the color mode. And don't go crazy over absolute positioning, because there's this idea that I have to absolute position everything, and it's not really necessary, because once you apply transform, the element will have a C index, and you can apply relative. The only problem with absolute positioning, it does, is really like the black sheep of the family, because it's, and it has like a rebellion in it, and it does whatever it wants. So you have to be certain that you can handle a lot of absolute elements. Otherwise, I recommend you to go for um, relative or fixed elements. But on the other hand, absolute and fixed have better performance than relative. So you can like go from one or the other. So um, closing. Um, Choose the best implementation according to your project needs. Simply, there are a thousand ways of doing parallax, and nobody's going to tell you anything if you use Pillar instead of writing 100 lines of JavaScript, or if you use a library and you don't use Pillar. Whatever is great for your project, use it. And, and please try to keep, keep a clean HTML, because I've seen horrible things, and I'm one of those semantics crazy people, so yeah, try to keep, <laughs> keep it clean, okay? <laughs> well, thank you very much. The slides are over there. <laughs>